would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in Oh his love for me Oh his love Order up, my friends. It's me, Jason. And today I'm serving up a delicious dish that's gonna make you oh so jealous. Let me get it from the oven. Double, double chocolate chip cookies. Oh, those are good. <laughs> All right, taste test. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna eat these now. They're way too hot. I'm gonna have to wait to enjoy these chewy, <laughs> gooey, delicious cookies. I'm gonna have to use some patience. Patience, waiting until later for what you want now. It'll be a challenge to wait, but I will do it. <laughs> do you smell that? <laughs> of course. So let me try to describe the smell. Imagine you're walking along a beach made entirely of chocolate chip cookies and the chocolate ocean is waving nearby as you breathe in the air which is filled with a warm chocolatey breeze. That's what it's like to be in the presence of these cookies. <laughs> Maybe just one bite. No. No cookies. I've got to think about something else. Lights, table, computer, green screen, mitts. Oh, but I can still smell them. I can still smell them. Okay. In today's story, we'll hear about a group of people who are finding it very hard to wait 
And they even knew better that they had to wait. You'll check it out in the story later. Well, if you're like me and you've got to see things happen right away, remember this so you don't miss a little spiritual delay. When you have to wait, don't hesitate. Part God sees the whole. Patience is what patience does, reminding us God's in control. Do not wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, Psalm 27, 14 says, Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, Psalm 27, 14 says, Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Hey everyone, we have a really amazing story from the Bible today. We're going to go back to the Old Testament to check in with our friends, the Israelites. Now you may remember that for hundreds of years, the Israelites were slaves in a land called Egypt. That is, until God sent a man named Moses to lead them to freedom. Through Moses, God rescued his people and set them free. Now even though the Israelites were free, they were living in the wilderness. But God was with them, leading them day and night. God provided his people with bread from heaven called manna, and all the Israelites had to do was collect it each morning. Now God also gave them water, and one time God told Moses to strike a rock and fresh water flowed from nowhere. God used amazing miracles to show the Israelites that he was with them and that he loved them. Well, after three months of traveling through the wilderness, God's people arrived at Mount Sinai, and there they rested. And that's where our story starts, as the Israelites camped in the desert at the foot of the mountain. Well, one day, God called Moses to the top of the mountain to meet with him. And this is what God told Moses in Exodus 19, verses 4 to 5. You have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. While Moses went back down the mountain, he told all the people what God had said, that they would be God's special treasure if they followed his commands, and the people agreed. Well, later, God called Moses to meet with him again on the mountaintop. And before he went up, Moses talked to the elders and let them all know that if they needed anything, if they needed anything at all to talk to his brother Aaron or to her, Then Moses and his assistant, Joshua, they went up the mountain again. And as Moses reached the top of the mountain, a cloud covered it. And Moses stayed on top of the mountain with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Meanwhile, back at the camp, the people got impatient. They told Moses' brother Aaron that they didn't know what had happened to Moses. They asked Aaron to make a God that they could see and worship. We need someone to really take charge. A God we can see. A God who will lead us. Moses may have brought us out of Egypt, but he's just disappeared. Poof. What are you going to do, Aaron? Of course, we know that you can't make a statue to contain God. But the Israelites completely forgot that. Aaron melted all their gold and formed it into a golden calf. Now, I know it's hard for us to understand, but the people were so excited to have this new statue of God, and they said this in Exodus 32, verse 4, Israel, here is your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Can you believe that? Well, the next day, the people brought sacrifices and danced wildly in front of the golden calf. I bet you can imagine God was not too happy with everything that was happening. 
And so he told Moses in Exodus 32, verses 7 to 8, Go down. Your people you brought up out of Egypt have become very sinful. They have turned away from what I commanded. And so Moses and Joshua had to come back down the mountain. And Moses carried two heavy stone tablets with the laws God had given his people. And as they climbed down, Joshua heard the noises of the party below. He thought it sounded like the Israelites were in trouble or at war, but Moses knew better. Moses and Joshua, they approached the camp, and they saw the people dancing around the golden calf. And Moses was so angry that he threw down the tablets and broke them. Moses burned the golden calf in the fire. Moses was angry. He was angry because of how impatient the people had been. Over and over again, God had helped them. He'd rescued them from Egypt. He would led them through the wilderness. He'd helped them find food and water every single day. And after all of that, when the Israelites had to wait for Moses just a little while, they forgot what God had told them about who he is and how to follow him. And they chose their own way instead. <laughs> if only they had remembered what's true about God, that they could trust him no matter what, that he is faithful and trustworthy, and he would never, ever leave them. If the Israelites had focused on those things, well, this story could have had a much better ending. And you know, we can make a better choice than they did. We can choose to trust God and to be patient. You see, when you have to wait, remember what's true. Now, as we close, let's pray and let's ask God to help us do just that. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for being trustworthy and true. Please help us to be patient and avoid making the same mistake as the Israelites did. God, when we feel like we can't wait, would you help us make the wise choice and not give in? Remind us of how loving and how faithful you truly are. God, thank you for always being there to guide us. We love you, and we pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Everybody agreed and said, Amen. Hey, parents. After WOW today, don't forget to download the At Home Guide so that you can continue the conversation at home with your kids. Let's pray. God, thank you for being trustworthy and true. Please help us be patient and avoid making the same mistake as the Israelites did when we feel like we can't wait Help us make the wise choice and not give in. Remind us of how loving and faithful you truly are. Thank you for always being there to guide us. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer, Hayden. I've had a great time this week learning about how I can be more patient. To learn more about patience, be sure you check out our family guide. It's available on our website and it has lots of great family activities like this one. This is a game called Put It Back in the Jar. <laughs> I built my own cookie jar using this mason jar and for a cookie I'm using this lime green wooden donut. And put it back in the jar, you see if you have the patience to put the cookie back in the jar and wait for snack time. You can build your own at home using things that you have around the house, and our instructions have plenty of ideas to make that easy. Can you get the cookie back in the jar? Yes! Now, I hope you'll join us next week to learn more about having patience. For now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. All God's children say, Amen. Double.